yeah, that last standard that y'all taught today addressed linear versus linear equations. Yeah. Um, so there's like, yeah, and we've been talking about like pieces of linear equations and some of the things. Um, I'm gonna model like some ways, cause like yeah. even if we, like one, we recognize that like, yes, we have not explicitly talked about like what an equation of function is, what the pieces are of it. Um, there are also like common, like this performance test is not actually like a test, like testing solely math knowledge. Math knowledge to figure out <coughs> the equation. Um, so I'm gonna, and that's part of what we're actually gonna kick off the modeling with. Um, like I always start all my performance classes with that. Um, so as you have questions about that, just drop those down. Ah, perfect timing. Um, okay. Um, so um, we're gonna go ahead and begin. If you have questions though, like we're gonna definitely address those in the Q&A. Yep. Um, also, real quick, because Dylan is gonna pass out. Um, so Dylan was actually in the three majors last year, did this <coughs> last year, and I did it in a similar format, and he taught third through eighth grade mathematics this year. Um, so for middle school people especially, if you're wondering like, man, I'm really gonna need some help adapting this for middle school, um, Dylan is gonna give you some context information, um, and won't be able to meet with you like before tomorrow because he's doing it, but like meet with you to do a second performance test. So I wanted to, I invited him in office to offer I also teach in Sunflower County. I don't know, you're all Delta, right? Yes. Are any of you in Sunflower County? We should also have a chat, sidebar, about Sunflower <coughs> County. I have all the things. I also have very good working relationships with both the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the former <laughs> curriculum director. So, like I can kind of get the ball rolling because I went in blind my first year and I was <laughs> paralyzed for the first 18 weeks. Um, I'm also a school manager at Pyramid and you'll see me in the morning on buses. <laughs> so it's just, okay. Just like, all right. You have Miss Frankie. Thank you for working with me. <laughs> I'm not against me. I appreciate that. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just trying to. Um, I'm the Sunflower person. I'm Chandler too, just so you know. Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's probably why I'm matching with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want me to just talk a little bit about middle school now? What do you want me to do? Um, talk okay. out? I don't care. <laughs> I think there are some, ex like, I think some folks teaching middle school are like, yes, like, I, I would love to hear from them because you can help to, like, teach them how to learn and teach middle school, like, in middle school. Okay. So the quick and easy is that middle school math, so six, seven, and eight, your job is to lay the foundation for algebra one. So if we don't do our job effectively, and we promote kids that are in eighth grade, like I have to, that are not ready for Algebra 1, um, Algebra 1 becomes really hard. And the reality of the Mississippi Delta is Algebra 1 is tested. So you will have students that will get to Algebra 1 unprepared and repeat it for four years in, until upon graduation. So you just don't want that. So that's why it's really important. Performance tasks, I do them twice a month. I was super skeptical in the beginning. I like really fought back against Devin, and I was like, ah, I don't think I actually understand the point of this. I would rather just be teaching, um, but it's actually the best kind of teaching, especially when you're in region and you know your kids and you can group them well. Um, they start teaching themselves, and students will start filling in the knowledge gaps between other students, and you basically get to sit back and watch the magic. So it's really nice. Are you using quasar rubric this time? Okay, so the quasar rubric, the way I word it in my classroom is two thirds of the grade is not about the quote unquote right answer. So to frame it in a positive way, like the lowest grade they can get is a 66. And to them, they'll know that a 65 is passing, 65 and up is, is passing. So it's just really important to stress um, the understanding of like being able to think mathematically and write mathematically uh, because the state tests are going to reflect a performance task at the end of the year and this year's performance task was almost a third of the overall grade um, so it's just it's that's a huge shift my district was not ready for it I would venture to say that most districts weren't um, I mean I even with all the awesome training like I still felt like I could have done more um, so it's also true for our Okay. Like the exam also has yes. that. So if folks teaching in Arkansas, your kids will also be expected. Many schools are not prepared for that transition. 
Yeah. So, for instance, like a performance task was like an add-on to our last 39 weeks benchmark. Um, and most teachers that weren't um, proactive in the PD or like uh, or like me were doing them all year. Like it kind of caught students off guard because it was like open spaces, blank spaces for kids to write, and sometimes that's really overwhelming. It's overwhelming for me. I'm trying to study for the, <coughs> the LSAT and the GRE, and I don't like those sections. <laughs> um, so regarding middle school, I like have the pleasure of teaching all three years, so I get to see the vertical alignment. One of the things that I know everyone is telling you, and I definitely ignored everyone in the sessions last year, is understand the vertical alignment from year to year, especially if you're in ninth grade, so you can do quick in the moment remediation and understand what they should know coming to you and what they need to know when they leave you. So like, I know the fifth grade curriculum really well because I was actually teaching it this year, then I had a teacher go on maternity leave and I taught third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth all at once. And I like then got a bigger picture of understanding like if you drew a line from standard to standard across all five or six years. <laughs> hey Ethan. Hey. Um, so it's, it's very critical in understanding if you can get the mojo and understanding of what you should be doing in a performance task in the moment during the institute implementation within the first week of school, which is actually when I did my first performance task back in Legion. I think it was required. I can't really remember. I didn't contribute more to that for this year. Um, and it like got the ball rolling, and I felt way more confident back at my school versus not doing it over the summer and then being asked by my MTLD to do it and then not having the proper support or understanding. Um, so like this first one was, was going to be interesting, and the second one's going to get a lot better. And then the best thing to do is like ask Evan <coughs> and Ethan all of the questions so when you're back in region, um, you have a better understanding of what you need to do or how you can react to students' reactions to being asked to do in your performance task. Are they doing it in groups or no? Because um, we did that last year. Yeah, so the one I'm modeling today is gonna be that, and I'm gonna give folks a copy of the lesson pattern that I'm using for this, um, which I've typed out. Um, my group's got it, and other folks here all agree so take my contact information, especially the Sunflower people. I love to talk to you. I love Sunflower. It's very near and dear to my heart. And I also love middle school. And I have all the resources. So if you need anything, don't buy it. Please let me send you a Google Drive of all the things I have, and then you can buy other things. Because I bought a lot of stuff that I didn't need to, and I kind of regret it now. So I'm going to give you all the things. And then and that applies to anyone. My name is Sunflower, Mrs. T. Delta. Any core, math, I've got it all. Well, most of it. So, including Jeopardy for the days when you do so like, today's gonna be a Jeopardy day. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank okay, you so much, I'm gonna Dylan. Go yeah, Dylan's a great resource. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a reach out for him, especially if you have questions about adapting what we're doing to high school and middle school. Um, Thank you, see you later, Devin. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we're gonna launch into the actual like modeling of this lesson. Um, so I'm gonna kind of, um, <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be with a little bit of teacher presence um, to give you a little bit of grace, I haven't taught a lesson in a while. So, um, uh, okay, great. Good morning, class. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah, <laughs> I am so excited. Today, we are going to do a performance task. Now, I know we've been talking about those a little bit this week. Um, and I wanted to start out by actually explaining to you how this is going to work in real life and also what the different classroom activities will look like during our time together today. So, um, today's lesson is going to cover three things. So I know on our exit ticket this past week, um, when I've been giving feedback to you, it's been about whether your question is right or wrong, right? And I've given you some feedback or some comments on that, but mostly it's been checking to see if your answer is right or wrong. Okay, so one of the things that we are going to look at today is actually like, what is the answers um, that you are providing um, for the task that we're going to do today, okay? There's also going to be two other ways um, that we're gonna, um, I'm gonna be checking to see if you understand the content today, um, or um, checking to see um, what you're thinking about the problem. Today is much more about how you are thinking about the problem, okay? So one of the things I'm gonna look at is strategic knowledge, okay? So this is, what is your plan? How are you thinking about this? Okay, could somebody share with me a strategy of how you or thought about a problem this week, like a tool we might have used. 
this. telling me your answer is right. Um, can somebody give me an idea of how I could maybe start a sentence to communicate that my answer is right? So we've done a lot of comparing numbers, comparing values, um, and we've done some showing of math, um, our, like our step and calculation for math. Okay. So what's one thing that somebody notices about this? Yes. It's not a small sum. Mm. So if I get the wrong answer, am I going to get a zero on this? How can I? If I get the wrong answer, how can I avoid getting a zero? show my thinking reasonable decision process. How else can I get something that I get the answer? So I could be a good communicator today by actually like writing a couple sentences, right? So like stay with me. Do you think it's all gonna have to be like nasty talk? Like do I have to use all these like have to be nasty conversations? No. I mean I don't have to, it'll definitely help, right? I can show some like strategic knowledge and I can show some math knowledge by that. But even if I'm just explaining like this is what makes sense to me, I can get some points in my answer. Okay? Um so I wanted to walk you all through that because it's not just this. This helps, right? But you can get 66% minimum by, like, even if you don't get any of the answers right today, you can get 66% minimum by just, by just telling me how you're thinking and communicating that. Right? Um, so I wanted to set you all up with that. 
So the next thing I want to do before we get into our task for today um, is we have been talking a lot. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, so normally I would have the rubric up here and actually like they would have the rubric in front of them with MK, meaning like math knowledge, behavior knowledge, and communication. Yeah. Sorry, we're making do today because I don't have I wasn't sure what you're gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> um there's a student friendly version of this, by the way, in your ISAT folder. Um, that's in like student friendly language. Um, highly recommend that. Scotty um, Scotty JB adapted that last year for Rural Bell Middle School and used that with the students. Um, Okay, so we've been talking about linear functions this week. Um, we're gonna do something I like to call a brain dump. Okay, so we're gonna actually, that not me, just a little bit. We are going to actually list all of the things that we know about linear functions. Okay, or even just functions. Okay, what's some, so I want you to take 30 seconds and on your paper, write down as many like words and things that you remember about linear functions. Anything that's been related to the lessons this week, um, any skills that we've tried, anything you've seen, any words that you remember. Okay, so 30 seconds. seconds and share a couple of the things that you came up with. See if there's something on their list that is not on your list. Go. one person um, to raise your hand and tell me about one of the things you and your group talked about. One thing you and your group talked about. Yes, ma'am. Y equals MX plus B. Mm. Okay. Can I somebody from another group add on to that? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me more about that. How are slope and this related? <coughs> Okay, so there's slope somewhere in here. Um, can somebody help us out? Does anybody know where slope is in here? Natasha. Okay, so slope is the M. M is for the um, Okay, so M is the slope. Can we add anything else to this? Y intercept. Where would the, 
Does anybody know where the Y intercept is here? Can somebody tell me about a Y intercept? I think y'all were talking about axis, right? Only touches its axis one time. Okay. <laughs> Griff in the back, do y'all have something you'd like to add? Um, I was just thinking about like the, the that was like two minutes ago with the slope. Mm -hmm. So rate of change, right? So slope, we know slope is rate of change. If you have like directions with linear functions, tell me a little bit about that. I heard some I heard some good stuff about directions, I think from co groups earlier. Yes. Uh, functions are positive if they rise from left to right. Mm, okay. So if we have positive, can we also have negative? Yes. Okay. Do we know we have we can have a positive or negative? Um, slope of the function, right? And you said for positive, it would go up from which direction? So up from left to right. Okay, and what about a negative function? It would go down from left to right. I heard a group talk about points. Okay, two points to graph a line. Um, what about like the shape of it? The straight line, okay? Straight line. Um, do I have exponents in a linear function? Yeah. 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 To the what? Yeah. <laughs> we probably didn't get that deep in the class in no, so this week, but we might have said like no exponents. Um, wow, okay, so we know we actually know a lot of stuff about linear functions. We did a lot this week, didn't we? Yeah, okay. Can anybody, um, I want to just like take 15 seconds and to think silently before it spills to the class. <coughs> Why do you think we just listed and like did this brain dump of a bunch of linear functions? Pause 15 seconds. When my hand goes down, that means 15 seconds is up, and you can like give an answer if you want. Friday, it's been a long week. Why else might we have done this? Sam. Ooh, boom. Okay, yeah, so jolt our memory because there's gonna be some stuff with linear functions on our performance test this week. All right, so I wanna set you all, all, all up real quick before we launch into this. So I handed everybody two sheets of paper when you came into class and did your do now test with me, okay? Um, and I want to acknowledge two things. So first, okay, <coughs> not there's going to be some graphs, some equations, some rules, and some tables that we might not have seen on here before, right? But we know a lot of stuff about linear functions. We know a lot of stuff about math, and we're pretty smart, right? We're real smart. So we can actually use some of the knowledge that we've got between linear functions and some of our previous math classes to help us with this. And I know we can solve it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick set of instructions. The only sheet that you're gonna need for the first part of this um, is the sheet that has all the graphs, the tables, the equations, and the rules on it. Okay, but everybody just have that out in front of them and be taking a look at that. Um, so what we are going to do is we're gonna spend we're gonna spend two minutes actually just silently looking at the graph, taking notes, underlining things. And I want you to just 
take notes and find patterns in the sheet in front of you. Okay, so we're going to do it in two minutes. Thirty more seconds to work with that. <coughs> A chance to um, take a look at those graphs. I want me to take a pen at me for a couple minutes. Um, I actually want us now, you've been sitting in groups of three. Um, I wanted you all to have some silent processing time to kind of come up with some ideas, see if we can make some connections from what we talked about. Um, I want you to turn and talk into your group of three. You're going to work for 10 minutes to try to get to as much of a consensus as possible as to the pairs that match up with each other. Okay? So, um, um, if you need some chart paper to be able to like draw some things out um, or like some bigger scratch paper for your group, that is up here for y'all to use. Um, you can send one representative from your group to come and get that as well. Um, so you will have, oh, how did I put it like? 10. Yeah. Um, so you'll have 10 minutes um, to work with your group on this. Be for, I'm going to be walking around and taking some notes and potentially asking some questions while you work with your group. Um, at the end of the 10 minutes, be prepared to share some things out with your group uh, that the group talked about or with your group. Right. Any questions before we break into group time? Right. Awesome. You have 10 minutes starting now. Go. Thank you. 
very small district in Chicago, and I ended up starting to run for the